we are doing the grade 12 RT paper one, which is the practical exam paper from November 2018. And we are now going to do the last part of question one. So let's look at number 1.4. And uh, we see a robot has received some instructions on a maze. It can either go one step forward, it can turn right, turn left. So there's an example of some instructions there. So that is obviously step forward, step forward, step forward, right turn, step forward. Okay. The code does the following, converts each line into capital letters. Okay, so this has been done for us. So we don't have to worry about this. This is going to be given to us in a variable called S instruction. So we're going to get this. What must we do with it? Well, we must display the line of instructions that have been entered. So decode it. So what are they saying? So they're saying display the commands in a rich edit control. And so it looks something like that. So if we get given the code, we must say step forward, step forward, step forward, right. So we're basically translating the code. But there's a little catch here. As soon as the number of forward steps exceeds 10, uh, we must say, hey, hey, the number of steps have used up. So there's an example, number of steps used up. You see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, number of steps used up. Um, and what else? And nothing else was displayed. Okay, so it do, we don't know how long the string is going to be, but we know that there can't be more. The moment we get to our 10th step forward, we need to stop doing this. So we actually don't know how many times we're going to be moving forward. Um, it could be a, a few steps short of it. So we're going to have to use some sort of while loop probably, a while or repeat loop um, until we've reached a 10. So um, we're going to have to figure that out. So let's start. Let's see what we can do here. Let's, let's, let's have a look. Let's start off small. There's our, our part of the program. And um, there we go. So command line. Okay, so we go, so that's going to get its command line. So there we go. We're going to enter the code over here. So whatever command we enter, it will get from there. Okay, so first things first, what do we have to do? We need to display that command line. So we're going to, let's clear, we're dealing with 1.4. So let's clear our memo control. I will not remember our rich edit. And then we're going to add this command line, which is already a string. So there we go. And then we're going to add just some random, it's going to be easier if I copy it because I've got a funny feeling we're going to do a lot of this and just display a blank line. Okay, so that means we will get that first two parts done. Okay, now we need to keep doing this. So I'm going to use a while loop. I don't know why, when we're going to stop just yet. Just leave that for now. So we have a begin end. Okay, now we need to go through each and every character. So we are believing at this particular point that S command looks like that. Okay, so we need to check each character individually. So I need to go, so I need some sort of looping variable. Now if I had a for loop, it would be nice, but we have a while loop instead. So we're going to need some sort of R variable. That's going to, we're going to have to manufacture our looping variable. So when you manufacture your own looping variable in a while loop, you're going to give it an initial value. So R is equal to, let's give it a zero started at zero and inside the loop we're going to increase r so now it is a one the very first time so we can look at position one and when it finishes the loop it'll go to two and three and four so we've manufactured a looping variable okay so that's great so we've got r so we want to get that little block here in there okay so we want to get that little part okay so that is S command, S command line, how do I get the first character? It would be one, or in this case, I. That's how you get each and every, each and every individual one. And we're going to check if that command equals an S. Then what are we doing? We need to, we need to add the word, we need to add the word straight that's an S, so that means it must move step forward. That's what they want. So we're going to say the word step forward. Okay. Okay, we better make it exactly like I want it. Okay, so it can either be an S, else if it's an R, what is, if that character is an R, what must we display? 
if it, because it could be an S, an R, or an L. If it's an R, it's turn right. So let's do this. Turn right. Oh, spell it right, Mr. Long. Turn right. Else. If it's none of those, then I'm assuming it's going to only be the option to turn left. If you put an if statement there, I'm sure it wouldn't be a major problem, but we're assuming that there's only three commands. So it's either step forward, turn right, turn left. Okay, so we're displaying this inside of our while loop. So that's the end of my while loop. Okay, so we know that. What, what else do we need to know? We need to stop. We need to count. We can only take 10 steps moving forward. So every time we move forward, we should probably count those steps. Okay, so I want to make a our count variable. And if you watched our previous video, we, we whenever we increase it, so whenever we step forward, we're going to have to increase our count. We don't increase it for the other steps, for the other turn right or turn left. Why? Because that's not a step, that's just turning. But if we're moving forward, we are taking a step. And whenever you increase a variable, like in our previous video, we should probably initialize our count to a starting value of zero. So Whenever we step forward, we display step forward and we increase count. Otherwise, we're doing this majority. Okay, great. Now, I think that's great. Now, when do we stop? Well, you cannot take more than 10 steps. So we will only do this if our count is, while well, our count is less than 10. While well, we haven't taken 10 steps, do this. Just keep doing it. Okay, great. Okay, so it does that. Okay. And what else? Is that is that all we need? I've got a funny feeling that's not all we need. So let's have a look. Okay. The other scenario, if we looked at this, what happens if there are one, two, three, four, five? See, in this example, there are only seven steps. So it, it's possible. So it's possible that it could stop before this. How do we know when to stop if there's if it hasn't reached its max steps? Well, when we reach the end of the string, which means we've got another condition. Either while our count is less than 10 and our i variable that's going 1, 2, 3, 4, while i is less than the length of s command line okay so if command line is three oh, let's say it's, it's 17 steps or 17 commands but it's not 10 steps okay we're going to keep going till it reaches the 17 or until we reach 10 steps this tells me to stop in the event that we've reached the end of our string and we haven't reached our quota of 10 steps okay however this tells us to stop when we've made 10 steps. Okay, so the, we, there's two possibilities. We're either stopping when there are 10 steps or we're stopping when the command, when we reach the end of the string. And the, and the one that we're using, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, there's seven steps in the command we're doing. So let's let's test this. Uh, no, I don't think it's finished yet, but let's have a look. So we're gonna enter in that command, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven steps. And it seems to be okay. It looks like it's run. Looks correct. And if we do this, and let's add in a couple of extra steps. So that would be 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. So we must stop. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we must not get the last two steps. Okay, so we do miss the last two steps. Okay, that, so that's working. But if we do that, they want us to say something. They want to say, hey, your number of steps has exceeded. So when does that happen? Well, when we've done the last step and our, and our, our count equals to 10, if our count equals to 10, then we must display it. So, we could, so our count will be a 10, it'll stop. So we could do this either inside the loop here we could do it outside the loop here. I don't think it'll make it that much of a difference. Let's try. If our count equals to 10 at this particular point, that means we've used up our steps. So the number of steps exceeds 10. So we must display the following. I'm just going to copy this. 
I never know if my copy and pasting is actually saving me time or not. I think it is. Number of forward steps exceeds 10. So when we finish writing all our code, if we get here and our count is a 10, that means we've reached our max. That's the reason why it stopped. So therefore we can say, hey, you've taken too many steps. So that will work. It doesn't display anything. But if I add in a couple of steps here and do it. Oh, not there. I'm just doing it here, Mr. Long. That's the wrong place. There we go. Put it in there. It, there we go. Gets to that point. Oh, sorry for you. We've stopped. We can't go. So the trick to this, okay, because we didn't know how many times we were going to do it, we needed some sort of loop, a while loop, but we need to create our own looping variable. And every time we stepped forward, we need to count it. We need to keep track of it. Okay, so this seems pretty straightforward. So, but when do we stop our loop? Well, there are two scenarios. The one scenario is when we've reached our maximum number of forward steps. So when our count is um, equal to 10, we must stop. So while count is less than 10, keep moving forward. The other possibility is that there aren't 10 steps. Maybe there's only seven, but we will reach the end of our instructions. And if we check in instruction one, two, three, four, five, by that, each character, then our looping variable that's going one, two, three, four, when it reaches the length of the string, when it's the same as the length of the string, that means we've used up all the instructions. So our R is less than the length of instruction. Keep doing it. The moment it equals to the length, that means it's going to do it one more time and then it is going to stop. I just want to double check. Does it do that last one? Does it do, does it do the last step? Yes, it does. So yeah, it is working. Okay. Great, so there's question four. That was a bit tricky, but we got through it. Well done, everyone. This was question one from the grade 12 RT paper for 2018. Um, we do have the exemplar paper as well on our YouTube channel, as well as other videos that explain the matrix syllabus as well as the grade 11 syllabus. So please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us when, so we can see whenever we post new videos. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.